The 6.5 is on the road here in Las Vegas, Nevada at Dell Tech World. Daniel, it has been AI all the time, whether it's PCs, data center, edge, and everything in between. Yeah, it has. It's been a great first day, covered a lot of bases. We knew that AI would be the theme, but we're seeing it really uh, you know, permeate throughout the enterprise, really from the handset devices, the AI PCs, all the way out to the edge and back to the data center, which we knew this was going to happen, Pat, but I've been beating this drum all day. We're hearing about how AI is being brought to life and bringing value to customers at Dell World, Dell Technologies World this year. Yeah, it is important, and, and it's funny, Daniel, uh, probably about a year ago, we started uh, picking a little bit at, at what was getting covered, right? You have uh, compute, which can be CPU, GPU, and ASIC. Uh, you have memory, you have storage, but very little was talked about networking, yet it, it's, it, uh, we had uh, GPUs that, that were set idle if you didn't have the right networking. Absolutely. We had networking that if misconfigured uh, could kill an entire training run or a low latency inference run. Uh, so let's dive into networking and I can't think of a better person here at Dell Tech World to talk about that than Saurabh. Great to meet you and welcome to the 6.5. Thank you so much, Pat and Dan. It's great to be here. And uh, as you rightly said, networking is, is becoming a hot topic across the board. Uh, there have been studies where it said that 57% you know, of the time an AI workload spends is waiting on networking. So you could exactly. have the best of compute, but if you don't have your networking done right, you're not going to get the peak performance. Exactly, exactly. I, uh, I tell you what, I mean, when you think about the bottlenecks to AI proliferation, um, we hear a lot about energy. We know that that's a, that's a significant constraint, especially as we go to this next era of liquid cooling and just the size of these systems and the amount of power that they require. But Pat, I mean, is next up? Has to be to some extent networking, right? Sure. We got to scale out the racks, we got to scale up. I mean, just yesterday in Computex, I think uh, Jensen showed the spine. I don't know if you saw what he showed, but uh, they basically it, it handles, the single spine handles as much in, uh, traffic as the entire internet today, um, which is all about networking. So when you all of a sudden have agents and there's trillions of these things working nonstop, around the clock, 24 seven, all requiring compute networking. It's going to be an incredible uh, ramp of, of needs. So we've heard a lot, Saurabh, about the Dell AI factory. We know that your partnership with NVIDIA has really been designed to make these things seamless, out of the box. You're looking at these in the real world. What are you seeing? What's the impact of these uh, AI factories? So the concept of Delhi AI Factory, and Michael spoke about that, did about the keynote earlier today, the 2.0 version, right? So it came about with the very thought of, you know, how compute storage networking has to work together to deliver an end state of performance characteristics, right? Uh, so what we have done with Delhi AI Factory, there are a few, you know, elements of, of infrastructure. One, but I'll, I'll start with data, which is the most important thing. It's a, it's a fuel for AI, right? And, and Dell has championed, has been a leader in the storage category for years protecting, managing, and storing data, ensuring that you know, it's, it's delivering what it's supposed to. And then we've championed that into the AI space. So data is one of the most important things. But when it comes to infrastructure, you have compute storage and networking. It has to be highly optimized to deliver an end state. And that's a choice of you know, technology from partnerships with the NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel on the compute side, and now on the networking side, you know, a portfolio that spans Broadcom and NVIDIA. And then you know, we package it together, validate it, create reference architectures to ensure that it meets the use cases we want for. Now, but what's also important is that open ecosystem. Because with, when you open it up, you create room for a lot of innovation, right? Mistral, Cohere, and a lot of other partners that we have brought on board. And then, you know, put the Dell wrapper of services around it. That's right. You know, which is ensuring that, you know, from the first gate of consulting, ensuring, you know, data centers all set up for the infrastructure, all the way driving into the use cases, whether it's you know, training, inferencing, and fine tuning, and networking is, is critical to ensure that it's, it's characterized based on the workloads, yeah. kind of infrastructure you want to meet that end state of use cases and, and business objectives. So when it comes to use cases inside of the enterprise, uh, it's, it's not homogenous. It's not one workload and it's called AI, okay? There are a lot of different things that you need to do. I love when Dan talks about the, all these agents moving around and doing all these things. Heck and that's, yeah, 8A, MCP. Exactly. API. <laughs> uh, but how do you segment use cases and then marry them up against specific technologies? 
So, well, the way we kind of go about this is kind of workloads you're looking at. So, you know, training is something that you're looking at, the GPU farms, the AI factories, the super large clusters that we're talking about. And Michael gave some references early in the day uh, when we speak about X.AI as the world, you know, the growth of the system, the big losses and, and technologies that they're building, the last language models, right? So the characteristics there are, you're looking at elephant flows, your bus street traffics, these, these architectures have to be highly optimized to, you know, to deliver the kind of capabilities you want. These are several thousands of GPUs that you have to connect together and ensure that you know, networking is set right. But when you, you know, shift right, looking into the enterprise space, things start to change. This is where the real, right. uh, you know, real action happens when you look at fine tuning those large language models and, and look at distributed inferencing use cases where the scales are slightly smaller, but they are still significant, where you have a few hosts working, a few GPUs working together. This is where you connect these large language models to enterprise specific data. Think of you know, banks and healthcare providers and, and different you know, enterprises in that category who have to keep the data on-prem. So you're not taking the data to AI, but you're taking AI to data. Right. Uh, ensuring that you're protecting that, you know, the user data on-prem and then still fine tuning that. And, and while we're taking the journey across different workloads, Dell, you know, internally we have you know, championed AI across different business functions, right? From content generation for our marketing teams to creating AI sales chatbots you know, for, our, uh, for our sellers to creating you know, uh, better services capabilities, improving our SLAs with, with a lot of these you know, training uh, you know, uh, workloads you know, in tune account to customer use cases. And then finally now we're taking that to the next stage of supply chain. Uh, you know, we're we looking at demand planning, UPP and all that to predict, you know, supply chain results across yeah. the board. Excellent, makes sense. So, well, let's talk a little bit about Sonic for uh, networking solutions. Um, it's something that Dell champions and it's been something Dell's been very focused on. But in the AI era, talk a little bit about how Sonic is bringing, you know, benefits to the modern AI fabric. Right, so Sonic is software for open networking in the cloud. Uh, I'll, I'll go back in time a little bit. Do that again, quick, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> go back in time when Microsoft was looking at setting up Azure and they were like, hey, you know, how do we commoditize this network and ensure that we're not dealing, you know, pockets of different vendors, we, we you know, homogenize right. that a little bit. And they, they, that's when they came up with this technology, software for open networking in the cloud. And they said, hey, any participating vendor, any participating silicon vendor has to qualify it. That was the origin, and we've been working with Microsoft all these years. We went about taking the journey with Sonic. It was contributed by Microsoft to the open source community, and we felt that was the natural evolution for networking, open networking. And we felt that you know this is the technology, bring the, the best practices, the hyperscalers to the enterprise market. We put our Red Hat model around it, you know, created our enterprise Sonic version, started adding features that were needed for different enterprise use cases, you know, put the Dell support services around it. And then as we took that journey of the last 24 months, you know, AI has been the next big use case and Ethernet getting ready with higher edX switching, you know, to, to deliver to the, the characteristics needed for AI, you know, use case, you know, Sonic, we have done a lot of feature enhancements focused on bringing load balancing yeah. capabilities, congestion management, supporting Rocky V2 for lossless fabrics, you know, addressing uh, low entropy use cases with enhanced hash hashing capabilities. So, Basically extending sonic capabilities from the cloud to the world of AI, you know, enabling features and capabilities that are needed for different workloads I mentioned about from training to inferencing and fine tuning and, and making sure that you know, we deliver on the performance and the characteristics that are needed there. So, uh, going to dig a little deeper here. How does uh, Dell AI fabric connectivity uh, span kind of the best of both worlds uh, with Ethernet and, and, and InfiniBand and how does that result in a higher level of resiliencies for these AI workloads? Right, that's a great question. Well, you know, this is a topic in, in every meeting, every AI networking meeting we get into. Uh, well, InfiniBand has been a great technology, right? Championing HPC use cases for years and decades. And, you know, Ethernet as a technology was not so much focused on HPC all these years, but, you know, with the advent of AI, you know, and generative AI, it's becoming more and more important. Like, just like, how Ethernet championed the cloud ecosystem, cloud computing, which was nothing but distributed computing all connected by Ethernet. Uh, you know, we, we see the same trend happen in the AI space as well with the advent of higher edX switching, better silicon capabilities. You know, when you look at, you know, Broadcom, the Tomahawk 4 and the Tomahawk 5, and look at, you know, NVIDIA's Spectrum 4 switching, 
uh, you know, all these Ethernet technologies have brought in a lot of native capabilities, high radix capabilities, you know, to allow that, you know, traffic flow for, for AI. I mean, think of these big pipelines that have to flow that petabytes of data across those switches. That's one, and then what we're doing is, we, we are baking networking into the Delhi App Factory concept by, by connecting that into the infrastructure block. You know, validating those networking use cases across compute storage and networking to deliver an end state. We have a portfolio that spans Broadcom to NVIDIA, choice of yeah. Ethernet and InfiniBand technologies. The customers get to pick and choose the right technology for that use case. In summary, Ethernet now, with all those optimizations that I mentioned with Sonic, and the silicon capabilities deliver similar performance as InfiniBand, and then we have results that prove that. Now it's about the customers, you know, picking the right technology. Do you want all NVIDIA reference architectures, the NCPs and the ERAs, or they want more open architectures with, with, with Sonic and the likes? It, it does feel like we're going to have a bit of that race, that uh, Android, Apple, kind of, <laughs> is it all InfiniBand, yes. is it all Ethernet, is it some hybrid? Of course, this week, I think, uh, there's been a bit of an opening up of you know using at least scale up uh, between non Nvidia and yeah. uh, compute. So, UEC, you know, UA Link, yes. all that fun to stuff. Starting to see it all happen. Yeah, CXL. I mean, we're just we're just we like acronyms too. We do. So, <laughs> you know, speaking of, let's talk about AI ops before we uh, wrap up here. <laughs> yes. um, but you know, we see a lot of work, especially you know whether it's with agents, but also just with infrastructure. You got orchestration. You got observability. You got AI ops. Um, you know. Dell is focused on all of these things, driving out better outcomes to the AI factory. Sort of, what about the services uh, component of all this? Because in the end, like, I, I say this all the time, but like right, right now the two big money makers in, in, in AI, infrastructure and consulting and services. So talk yeah. about the service side of this. Uh, it seems like a big opportunity for Dell. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So AI ops, I mean, the world of automation and observability has changed quite a lot, right? If you look at the core data center use cases, uh, you know, your standard SNMPs and syslogs and, and automation, CI, CD infrastructures, a code could work fine. But when you look at AI use cases, I mean, these are infrastructures that are running at peak capacity throughout, right? And you cannot just depend upon log-based, you know, telemetry tools, you know, to, to manage those infrastructures. You really need to have insights on what going, uh, what's going into the fabric. And then, you know, have technologies like AI agentic solutions that are, that are on, the, on the next, you know, looking at loads on the fabric, you know, taking real time decisions on, on managing congestion in the fabric, you know, technologies in AI ops that help you give the end to end fabric view on the flows from the NIC, from the compute GPUs to the NIC to all the way to the switches. And you now bring LLMs into these stacks which are machine learning interfaces in the system, learning about the fabric, giving you predictive optics health monitoring, giving you insights into the fabric that can help better decision making into the fabric, right? And now you bake all of this, right, and into the services world where you know, service is able to deliver better because you now know the fabric much better. You're able to give predictive insights on yeah. when you need to you know, increase your capacity when you, in, 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 of the infrastructure and stuff. And we have brought in a lot of those capabilities into a service side, you know, full spectrum of capabilities from the assessment of data center infrastructures, the consulting you know, practices, looking at designs and architecture guidelines, yeah best practices, reference architectures, to pre-production readiness with rack and, rack and stack and configuration setup, all the way to the day two operations and management with the AI ops capabilities. A lot of innovation happening into, into these uh, services and AI ops categories across. So Rob, I want to thank you so much for joining us here at Dell Technologies World. It's great to have a conversation, pulling together, you know, sometimes the missing link. Exactly. Which is networking all of this compute power you know, we've got the data, we've got the compute, we've got all the, the agents and, and we've got the generative tools, but we've got to make sure all these computers can talk to each other and move all this data. Sure. Networking is the key. Way to go. So Rob, let's have you back sometime soon. Thanks for joining the 6.5. Thank you so much for Thank having you. me here. Thanks, Pat. Thank you everybody for being part of the 6.5 on the road here at Dell Technologies World 2025. We're going to step away for a little break, but we'll be back with you very shortly. Stay tuned.